My name is Kevin Kirk. I'm a partner at the, uh, in, at the TSAOG Orthopedics and Spine, formerly known as the San Antonio Orthopedic Group here in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, my involvement with the AOA, I'm currently the chair of the Own the Bone Steering Committee and as such a member of the AOA Executive Committee. Um, I chose Jim uh, to be a pillar of the orthopedic, uh, AOA orthopedic pillar because of his mentorship and leadership, both in the military and outside the military. Um, I've kind of known Jim for probably a lot longer than he's probably known me. I was a physical therapist at Triple Army Medical Center back in the early 90s when he was like a, a resident at uh, Tripler. And so we probably crossed paths briefly, but it wasn't until I graduated from my orthopedic surgery residency at Walter Reed and my fellowship at um, Johns Hopkins and then I really got to know Jim because at the time he was the consultant to the Surgeon General for the United States Army and I was basically looking for a job. He, um, after our discussion, he saw my passion for uh, combat casualty care as well as foot and ankle surgery and he offered me a position to go to a Brook Army Medical Center where he is the, the chair of the orthopedic surgery and orthopedics and rehabilitation uh, department. And it allowed me to combine my passions for combat casualty care and foot and ankle surgery and appointed me the chief of the foot and ankle surgery service. After a few years of uh, the, the foot and ankle surgery service, he tapped me on the shoulder again to become the chief of the orthopedic uh, surgery service under his department leadership. And anybody that knows Jim has probably gotten the card. The card is uh, Philly's pillar to success. And I probably think that those leadership lessons and mentorship that uh, Jim has given us has probably impacted uh, so many orthopedic surgeons' careers over time. So I'd like to share a couple of those uh, pillars to success. The first one seems a little bit aggressive, but it's uh, everybody has 24 hours in a day. And it's a matter of what, what you want to do with them. And so at first you could take that as a little bit of a challenge. And I did because I always tried to beat Jim to work, but never is able to do it. And always leave a little bit later, which I was never able to do. And it wasn't a competition for Jim. It was about his servant leadership and his ability to mentor people to doing the right thing. The other thing was, is that how we um, treat our patients and actually treat our families. One of the other pillars was that in 25 years from now, your patients won't remember you, but your family will. And so even though he is a dedicated servant leader and really wanted you to excel at work, he also wanted you to excel as being a, 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 a family member and a leader of your family as well. And lastly, I think this is the one that I've carried on throughout my career, is that you'd always say praise in public but criticize in private. So anytime you have a difficult situation, you never really want to call anybody out in a public forum, but rather take them aside and use that as a teaching lesson. And I think that probably over time, I'm not the only one that, that Jim has taught those lessons, lessons to, because he served at so many different leadership levels. It is the chair of the orthopedic, uh, orthopedic and rehabilitation at uh, Brook Army Medical Center. He's also led the department at uh, Johns Hopkins for over the last decade. But outside of those leadership roles, he's also been committed to humanitarian service and leading medical missions to U the Ukraine and also taking over the COVID response at, at, in Baltimore during the pandemic. So I think that his leadership abilities and his mentorship inside and outside of orthopedics really makes him a pillar of our orthopedic profession. And so I'm proud to be a co-sponsor and co-champion for Jim's AOA pillar of orthopedics. Hello, my name is AJ Johnson. I am the uh, current program director at Dell Medical School, and it is my honor and privilege to uh, contribute this tribute video for my good friend, mentor, and sponsor, uh, J Dr. James Ficke. Uh, Dr. Ficke was uh, assigned to be my mentor uh, during my intern year. This was in 1998. I know he's going to hate that I gave the date, but uh, he has been my uh, mentor since my intern year. He presided over my uh, promotion from captain to major. Uh, he has been a staunch advocate for me and taught me 
numerous things on how to be an advocate for his uh, people under his uh, charge, his direct subordinates and his peers. He has taught me about servant leadership and how to be an administrative and organizational uh, leader, uh, changing organizational culture change. Uh, those are invaluable lessons that he uh, imparted to me uh, out of the goodness of his heart. Um, over the uh, course of my uh, mid-career stage, he gave me countless uh, bits of advice, how to navigate the promotion uh, process, how to become a division chief and ultimately to a department chair. Um, throughout it all, he has been a uh, staunch advocate for wounded warriors, uh, for his uh, peers, his faculty, and above all, his uh, learners, to include residents and medical students, uh, which uh, has spurred my passion into me mentorship and to ultimately become a uh, program director. Uh, I owe all this to him uh, and much more. It has been my uh, great pleasure uh, and luck and fortune in life to have him in my corner and ultimately to call him my friend. And uh, I cannot think of a more deserving uh, person than uh, my good friend, uh, Jim Vicky. Thank you. I'm Dawn Lepore and I'm a hand surgeon at Johns Hopkins and I've been a member of the AOA since 2012. I've had the honor of working with Jim Fickey for the past 10 years. Jim Fickey is the epitome of a pillar of the AOA and an unparalleled servant leader. His career, ranging from a colonel in the US Army and chair at Brook Army Medical Center and the San Antonio Military Medical Center, as well as orthopedic surgery consultant to the US Surgeon General, as well as director of the Maryland COVID Field Hospital, while he was chairing our department and chair of the Department of Orthopedic Surgery at Johns Hopkins for the past decade, and now as a director of the ABOS, has highlighted his leadership at all levels. He has been an incredible ally for women in orthopedic surgery and an outstanding advocate and ally for increasing equity, inclusion, and diversity in our field. He is an unparalleled role model for leadership for our medical students, residents, and faculty. He has been a mentor to me and to hundreds of colleagues and trainees. He has modeled the importance of integrity and transparency and has taught me that to lead is a verb and not a position to be held, as well as the importance of including the entire team in the vision and mission. He cares deeply for patients and for all those around him. Jim Fickey is a true leader in every sense of the word and embodies the definition of an AOA pillar of the orthopedic profession. I'm Jim Fickey. I'm the Robert Robinson Professor of Orthopedic Surgery here at Johns Hopkins. I'm the chair of the department and this is for the tribute to uh, the pillar that, uh, that I've had just recently the privilege of receiving for the American Orthopedic Association. I want to first give a little background. Uh, my leadership, my opportunities in leadership have been deep and profound and started when I was an Eagle Scout, when I earned the Eagle Scout in high school and then going to West Point both of those institutions are leadership from the core and similar to the American Orthopedic Association, teaching leadership to others. Um, I spent 30 years in the Army and that privilege was also with just a, so, and so many core values. Uh, what I learned in orthopedic surgery and I learned in the Army really have come together to become the leader that I've, that I've been privileged to be. Part of what I have been asked to, to address has been my service and my uh, my leadership and my contributions to the American Orthopedic Association. The AOA is, has been around since 1887 and has been a itself a pillar of leaders and people in the in the AOA have uh, have been established as leaders but then have paid it forward. It started as a leadership development committee and during my tenure as, as a chair uh, we were able to combine leadership 
development and the fellowship committee. So many of the traveling fellowships that people experience through the AOA are opportunities to experience leaders, to get to, to understand other leadership philosophies and to, uh, to grow. Also in that role, uh, developing and refining some of the way we, we teach ongoing leadership through the APEX program uh, and the current, our current rendition of uh, the Resident Leadership Forum and Emerging Leaders. All of those come, harken back to where when I started as an Eagle Scout and then became a cadet at West Point, leadership was tangible. Leadership was something that was, uh, was a course, it was a practice, and it was a way of life. Uh, during my time in the Army, I had the privilege of serving as a senior orthopedic surgeon, uh, the consultant to the Surgeon General and this advisor for orthopedics as a profession. During that time, one of my first residents was A.J. Johnson. Anthony Johnson was, uh, as a, became as a resident, a mentor, mentee, and then became my successor. And the idea of, of having a partner and a friend such as A.J., as one of the sponsors of, uh, of this pillar, I, I have just an, a lifetime and, and uh, debt of, of thanks for him. Another one was Kevin Kirk, who joined us in 2007, and around the same time that I uh, joined the AOA. And Kevin was my partner in foot and ankle, and also just a, a, a soulmate, if, you know, if it's appropriate to say, because Kevin has been, uh, we think alike, we, th we think about serving others, we think about how to, uh, to promote the profession. Uh, his role now in the AOA with, uh, with the Own the Bone is, uh, you know, it's just another step as far as leaders who you had the privilege to touch when they were young and early and have been successful. And last, the last sponsor and champion of this uh, pillar that I, I owe just a, an incredible debt to is Don Laporte. Dr. Laporte, has been my partner for 11 years. She's been here. Uh, we are, we as a partnership have such a great residency and a great department, uh, both as a practice partner and as a friend. And uh, when I learned about this pillar, it was, it was stunning. I was, um, I, I was just overwhelmed by the kindness and the support. And I want to thank the other. 25, 30 re people who have contributed to this and all of the, uh, the people behind the, the program. I, also, I want to comment a little bit about uh, just my role as a leader. As I've developed and grown, uh, I think that we stand on the shoulders of giants, but we have to understand that we serve others and that the notion of service has been so important in uh, the military and in orthopedics. So I will, um, you know, I, I, I have a, a card that I, I find valuable to share with residents and share with mentees. That card is really my definition of success, but it starts with thinking about uh, hard choices and it think, moves on and thinks about how when we are, when we are with patients, listening to our patients. They are the fundamental essence of our profession and of our being, and listen to the stories that they have. Uh, when, we, when we have been working hard, showing how hard we work doesn't benefit us. Um, I, I like to say when we've been up on call all night, uh, shave, shower, and, uh, and, and put a tie on. Look, uh, look your best for your, your clinic because being in a role that is difficult is part of our profession. Being in a role that is difficult and still being resilient and being uh, adaptable is part of our leadership of what, what the essence of, of what I think is, is so important in leadership. And finally, I just, my thanks to first uh, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, from whom I gain my strength and I can serve others. I also want to thank my mom and dad, Jim and Barb Fickey. They're both alive. My dad is 91 and uh, has been a leader and been a servant for his entire career, his entire life. And uh, it's just, it's so important. My values are were defined by those early years and, and those three individuals. I also have to 
say that uh, I couldn't do any of what I've done without my wife, Roberta uh, Burt, and my children, Heather, Ben, and Eric are, uh, are professionals. They're on my, uh, my frequent text list. We talk uh, every day, if not every, if not, um, we text and we have messages. And so uh, the privilege to, uh, to raise those three successful children uh, with my wife has been uh, you know, one of the most profound and greatest legacies I think I can leave.